It's a boy! Well, five, five, someone said, uh, someone heard that babies, uh, in utero babies dream. Mm-hmm. Well, that's something new. Let's use that. <laughs> that's something. Uh, so Alice is pregnant by Dan. The, she gets together with the jock from four, and uh, he's barely in five. I think he dies. Pretty dri- early, yeah. He drives a truck and he dies, right? Yeah. <laughs> Back here, Dan. He, yeah, he starts in his truck. He falls starts asleep in, in his truck, and then he has a whole epic adventure. It's the most with... elaborate Freddy death. Yeah. Uh, where, yeah, where Freddy... I don't know, the motorcycle comes alive and turns him into a robot and then rips his face off. And it's very weird. He looks like a ghost rider. It's apparently, the, the, the influence of that was this movie called Tetsuo the Iron Man, which is this really bizarre Japanese movie where a man merges with metal and he becomes this giant, like, metal creature. So it was apparently inspired by that. <laughs> This is, again, part five is where they're like, okay, we want to do all these elaborate effect sequences and we'll string a story together to connect it all. Mm, That's basically what the movie is. Yeah, because it was a mess. It it is a mess. I actually like part five a lot more than I think other people do. Uh, Like I mentioned before, the little details of Alice and her dad. It's good until the end. Things like that. Well, I don't know what the f*** is going on at the end of that movie. But uh, I think, uh, what's her name? Greta is the girl who's got the very overbearing mom who, yes. yeah, be watch a, what one, you eat, yeah, you wanna, model, you're going to be a model. Kinda, yeah. So she's very, like, self-conscious about her appearance and her weight. And I think that's one of the best Freddy deaths because it's so mean. Yeah. it's like, And it's more so there was a, like, unrated bon cut. Bon Appetit, bitch. Yeah, that's one of the best bitches from Freddy. Bon Appetit. But there was an unrated version that was released on, I think, just on Laserdisc and maybe VHS, and it's never been on any of the other releases, where during that scene, he's scooping out her stomach and feeding it to her. I remember that was on the back of the VHS tape, that mm. picture of her, like, the Yeah, her cheeks. cheeks get bloated. Yeah. And, and all, the, like all the party guests are, like, laughing. Yeah. It's very, that, that's, like, more kind of surreal, nightmarish stuff. Yeah, they These put These distorted on the angles. Light angle lens, and yeah. everyone's like, ugh. <laughs> It gets all 90s and in your face. But um, that's another death that where, with with Dan, I guess real world, he's uh, riding down the street in a motorcycle that's on fire. No, he's falling asleep in his truck. Oh, yes, he does. And then his truck crashes. So. And then they, they, they find his body, and it doesn't look like that. No, no. So I was saying with Greta, she looks like like a blah, all screwed up in the dream, but in real life, it's just she's choking yeah. on food. Yeah. Well, there's the kid. Yeah, the kid with um, he turns into a cartoon. The nineties nineties kid. Nineties kid who. Which this movie wasn't even nineties, but it's like eighty nine. It's yeah, it's right on the cusp. He's nineties kid. He draws comic books. He lives in a factory. Oh, he rides a skateboard. Of course, of and, course. Um, he he wants to be as cool as his comic book character, Mister Man with the Two Guns and the thing. Yeah. And then yeah, Freddy becomes Super Freddy, and it becomes embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, Freddy turns him into a comic and then drains all the ink out of him and then cuts him up. Well, okay, let's talk about Jacob. Oh, hello. The little kid from Jurassic Park. Well, uh, uh, oh yeah, that stupid kid. Mm -hmm. How do you know these things? (laughs) Because that kid is pretty recognizable. So Alice has an unborn baby in her... And but in her un- dreams, in her she dreams, sees... it's manifested as an ugly boy, <laughs> and the and uh, the boy Freddy is using the boy's dreams, the infant's, the fetus's dreams, to use its power to kill again. Yes. And Alice doesn't want to abort the baby; she wants to keep him. Have you thought about not having the baby? I mean, no baby, no baby's dreams. He's part of me and Dan. I want to keep him. As she says, though, because her, her boyfriend has died, Dan has died, she says this is the last part of him. 
Oh, so yeah. She has an emotional I, I, yeah, I, I get why she does one There's two. A, yeah. And that's that's another thing. I think like Sarah Risher is one of the producers of all these movies. She's one of those people that's like worked with Robert Shea from the beginning. It was like the two of them started the company. And I think she was pregnant around the time they made that movie. So that influence of like the stress and things you think about as, you know, a mother or as an expecting mother, like that kind of worked into it. I thought it needed to have those themes of abortion and, and birth and motherhood. One of the executives was pregnant at the time and I was literally picturing, you know, picture the claws clawing their way out. Conceptually it works, no pun intended, <laughs> but um, uh, execution wise, mm, eh, kid's ugly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, he's creepy looking. You light him but right. But you don't want him to be creepy looking. You want him to be like angelic and cute. I don't know. He should have been more of a weird Star Wars force ghost or some kind of manifestation that wasn't quite a, a perfectly formed kid. Like, I don't know. Well, I think in the logic of the movie, you're not supposed to realize that's her kid, even though you do immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He's just supposed, she just sees him in the hallway and she thinks it's a kid in the hospital. Yeah, and... Um, you, you understand immediately, though, like... That, sure, yeah, sure. That's but her kid. Did Alice ever think to herself, how did me and Dan have such a fucking ugly kid? <laughs> <laughs> We're both attractive people. How did this happen? Well, speaking of attractive I people... I had sex with Uncle Fester? <laughs> speaking of attractive people, before we leave part five, I gotta bring this up before I forget. Uh, just yesterday, I found this out. Uh, Alice, played by Lisa Wilcox, currently a cast member on the hit reality TV series, Milf Manor. Really? <laughs> Which is a real show. I've yeah. heard of the show, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you know the premise of the show? I, I do. Didn't. Yeah, it was controversial. It's Well, it's all these MILFs. MILFs and then their sons. And then their sons. So but Lisa Wilcox shows up with her son, and they're all trying to hook up with other MILFs or sons. <laughs> I'm Ryan, and this is my beautiful mom, Lisa. Aww. <laughs> it's so fucking creepy. Is that, yeah. And they showed up. I watched like the first five minutes, and the kid's like, my mom was an actress in the 80s, and now she's on Milf Manor. And that's the only mention of anything related to her acting career, or uh, they don't show anything from Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, before I forget, I'll, I'll inject this into this off-topic topic. Sure. Uh, Lisa Wilcox was on Star Trek The Next Generation. She appreciates the affection you've shown me. And if I'm not mistaken, Mike, other people from the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise have also been on Star Trek also, right? Uh, yeah, a couple. You know, Jay, I looked into this briefly because I thought the list was going to grow exponentially. And it probably would have if I did like every minor character, mm. you know, but I just did the main ones. But yeah, Lisa Wilcox. Don't you want me to give you pleasure? She's in an episode called The Vengeance Factor. She plays Yuta. Uh, they're negotiating this thing and uh, she turns out to be like a spy for the bad guys and Riker finds out. I think Riker had a thing for her. Mm. Um, and he's like, he's like, don't do it. She's gonna assassinate the main lady and Riker's like, I got this phaser. I'm gonna set it to. I'm gonna set it to kill. Take. Don't put your weapon down, mm. Alice. And she's like, I have to. I swear the cause. And he's like, no. and then he vaporizes her. Oh my god. And it's horrifying. She's one of the few people to survive two Nightmare on Elm Street movies. And right and now, just and then vaporizes he her. Just turns her into dust. <laughs> but yeah, and then um, Kristen's mom from three and four. Oh, Andale. 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 Yes, Andale yeah, lady. Yeah. I'm like I'm like I'm looking at her face and I'm like her name her name is uh Brooke Bundy. She, I'm like she's in Star Trek uh season 1. Uh you this doesn't mean anything to you. It means something to somebody out there. There's, there's a character she's a prominent character in the whole episode. Her and Riker help this episode where everyone on the crew gets drunk. Okay. They don't drink alcohol but they catch a disease that work, affects the brain like alcohol. These are control chips. So everyone's like wasted and, um, and Wesley takes control of the ship um, with his little force field machine. He takes over engineering and, and they're like playing with all the, all the parts of the ship and throwing them around. Everyone's like drunk. 
and Picard and Beverly are getting hot under the collar for each other. Oh my God. They're getting hot and heavy and, and they're, everyone's boozed up. I'm a woman. I haven't had the comfort of a husband, a man. Even Data, I guess, gets affected somehow. They explain it briefly. <laughs> but Riker and McDougal, some random character, are the last ones to kind of like, uh, they, they get infected later. And so they're, they still have clear, clear head. And um, McDougal's trying to take down Wesley Crusher's force field the whole time. And then, uh, do you know who Lena Banks is? No. Okay, she was a mourner at the funeral, uncredited. In which movie? Uh, That's oh. the thing about this franchise, lots of funeral scenes. I'm sorry, I think it's five. No, it's New Nightmare, sorry. Oh, it's okay. New Nightmare when the, when they have the cameos. Oh, okay. Where you see um, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday Night, Night's there. Um, Rod from the first movie's Rod there. Rod from the first movie's there. Uh, and then uh, Wes Craven shows up late because <laughs> he was too busy directing the scene. <laughs> Is that how he's directing New Nightmare? Yeah. He had um, to use the old time cranky camera? They, 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 he wanted to stay true to the cinematic art for him. Oh, okay. He's, he's filming the scene. But, um, so I'm like, uh, I don't know who this is. And then she, she has a credit as like a producer or casting director. But she has, she's an uncredited Starfleet ensign in like eight Next Gen episodes. Oh, wow. Just like a background character. So yeah. she, there's some crossover there. Huh. Um, and then, uh, and then Robert England, of course, was not on Star Trek The Next Generation. Was, so Robert England was not on any version of Star Trek? That's shocking find. to me. It seems like he would show up somewhere. I know he was on V, but that was pre-Nightmare. He, no, but he did do two movies that have the same titles as Next Generation episodes. Oh, well, that's almost the same thing. Journeys and, and Night Terrors. Oh, okay. Uh, the unrelated, but scrolling through them, they caught my eye. Yeah. Well, Night Terrors, I mean, that's right up his alley, so. They put him in that movie, yeah. Oh, so I know that, that movie. I've never seen it, but I know that, I remember the VHS cover. I think that was directed by Toby Hooper. Mm. Like one of his, like, later period direct v VHS movies. But that's bad. that's uh, my, my TNG connection for the day. All right. I figured I'd, I'd not, share Not that. as many as I would expect, but. Uh, no, 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 no. But, uh, but three of the actresses from various Nightmare on Elm Street movies were all on the sitcom Just the Ten of Us together. This looks like something out of Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, right. Heather, Heather Langenkamp, of course, uh, the bug girl from part four. And in part two, there's the opening on the bus where Freddy's driving the bus. One of the scared girls on the bus was also one of the sisters on Just the Ten of Us. Freddy should have cornered them all and then, Just the Ten of Us. <laughs> and the two gloves. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he'd have to have the knives on his thumb, too. How do we make Freddy better? Two gloves. <laughs> You're hired. You're going to make it far in show business. <laughs> with a brain like that. Freddy's just being supportive now? He's lost the... Uh... Well, he's being sarcastic. Oh, oh He's okay. mocking the, the writer. Okay. Like, how oh, do we okay. make Freddy better? And then someone goes two gloves and then Freddy appears and mocks him for yeah. his stupid suggestion. But then he uses two gloves to kill that guy. He's like, sure, maybe he had a point. But well, then he continues to mock him and go, how about two hats? <laughs> and then <laughs> Freddy's head splits in two. Oh yeah. How about two Freddy's? Yeah. Ah, two Freddy's are better than one. <laughs> and he's like, you know, the writer's like, <laughs> and all the people are just like he, the writers, like sleeping in the chair, and they're yeah. just like going through like story beats on the on the dry erase board. Mm -hmm. is, is, is Mark okay? And then he goes up to the dry erase board and. Oh yeah. No, the oh. thing is, it doesn't make a sound because it's a oh, dry erase board. Oh, because it's a dry erase board. Yeah. And then he goes, "Here's a plot point." <laughs> How's this for a deep cut? <laughs> you know, my old lady died when I was a kid too. And I turned out just fine!
Well, we <laughs> neglected to discuss the ending of number five when... Well, that's because I don't know what the hell is happening. Everyone runs through an M.C. Escher painting. Which is cool visually. That's another one of those kind of visual sequences that I like. You tell me, Jay, how did five end? Well, Freddy's trying to, like, manipulate this kid to get this kid to turn to the dark side. Yes. Uh, and then at the end, they're in some sort of weird, abstract chapel oh, the, oh, thing. The, 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 uh, we never... We, we never talked talk about, about Son mom. of a Thousand Maniacs, yeah. Son of a Hundred Maniacs. Mm -hmm. Freddy... Which is established in three. It's just established in three. The young girl on the staff was accidentally locked in here over the holidays. The inmates kept her hidden for days. When they found her, she was barely alive. And with child, the bastard son of a hundred maniacs. Um, which is which is such a nice touch. I love the fact that when they show the um, uh, uh, the asylum for all the criminally insane and the jail keepers leave, mm -hmm. and Amanda Kruger's there, and they have all these like weird distorted shots. Of Looks it. like a Terry Gilliam. Movie. Yes, and yeah. they're all they're all in their like their insane outfits, and they're all like, Wah! and Robert England is in there, and he's yeah. just like yeah, looking at the camera. <laughs> and, um, and I'm like, okay, yeah, a uh, uh, hundred maniacs can rape her, but literally only one can actually be the father. Yeah. That's biologically true. Yes. Only one sperm can infertilize that egg, and it's that Robert England, and he's there, and yeah. that's Freddie's true father. Mm -hmm. And I think I thought that was such a lovely touch. But yeah, there's the lore that a nun was raped by crazy men in an asylum, and that's how Freddy was born. He gets taunted as a child. Which then leads to him apparently becoming a murderer. Yeah, uh, it's sort of like a nature versus nurture thing. Um, so yeah, so that that's that's some sort of canon and logic. Yeah. And that's, yeah, it, it, not every movie, but as the movies went on, they would introduce a couple new little elements yeah. without ruining it, without ruining what came before. Like, I think that's interesting. Like, oh, he, his mom was a nun. Like, yeah. that adds a new uh, angle to it. Yeah, so so the nun was walled into a, her bones weren't properly put to rest. That so, was that was the storyline. It's yeah. like she had to release the nun from her earthly conf confines. Mm -hmm. So she had to break down that brick wall. She had her friend do it. Her friend did it, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And then the nun has powers again. Also, simultaneously, the little kid, the little boy, Nan uh, not Nancy, Alice's unborn kid. It's Jacob. Jacob. He is like, uh, Freddy, I want to teach me. Teach me how to be evil like you. So now Freddy's like, oh, do I kill Alice or do I help this kid? And then the little kid's tricking Freddy. He's distracting Freddy. Now, Jacob, unleash the power he has given you. And then he vomits out something that goes into Freddy. Yes, and yes. Then, and then all the souls of the people that Freddy killed in just this one movie come out of Freddy's back after the kid vomits into his chest and those souls drag Freddy over to They're like the little Amanda heads They're little with heads. strings attached to him. Yes. yes, and they drag Freddy. And they're the result of little Jacob vomiting a pillar of flesh into Freddy? Yes, yes. I have no idea what's happening at the end yeah, of the movie. Yeah, it didn't make no sense. <laughs> And then Jacob goes into uh, Alice's womb. Yeah. And then they're, it's all womby. Yes. And it's all girl power. Girls get it done. Sure, sure. Uh, this is the first feminist film. It's the no, first most feminist film. Most people don't give it that credit, but nope, nope. it deserves it. This is the first girls get it done. Yeah. Also ends with a sequel tease, because even though Amanda Kruger has now sucked him back into her womb, we see his hand burst out as all the doors start closing. That's right. Because you got to have that sequel tease. That's right. But the movie did not do very well at the box office. So it, was like, run out, it was running out of steam then. How do, we, how do we bring people back again? Oh, we'll say the next one is the last one, and we'll make Freddy's dead. What do we got to do in the movie to I know make that happen? I know our plot for Freddy 
goes to Hollywood. Oh, oh. Freddy needs to kill the children of all the writers that <laughs> wrote all the Freddy movies. <laughs> you came up with that shit on, <laughs> on the last minute, didn't you? <laughs> Why does Jacob vomit? <laughs> when did he vomit up? <laughs> How did it kill me? I don't know. I don't know, Matt. I'm just a zoomer. My dad wrote that script in 1989. <laughs> I'm just browsing through my TikTok. TikTok, this bitch. All the children of all the hack screenwriters that <laughs> slept together all the Freddy movies are being offed one at a time. They could really then shoot at Hollywood High School. Yeah, yeah. Right, I mean, yeah which is in Springwood, Ohio. Mm hmm. All those Ohio palm trees. All those Ohio palm trees. Yeah. Can they just leave the Midwest out of these horror franchises? Come on. Anyways, uh, Freddy goes to Hollywood. <laughs> With music by Frankie goes to Hollywood. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, we'll get them back together. Can you do the score? That song, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, the Relax song, that got popular from the Brian De Palma movie Body Double, and the lead in Body Double is not Bill Maher from Nightmare 3. Okay, that's a that's a pretty strong connection. It's Let's something. go with it. It's something. Let's get him back. Is he dead or? I, yeah, he's still around. Okay, all right. His character didn't die. No. And Robert Chase still alive. Robert Chase still around, yeah. Uh, Heather, Heather Langenkamp, she's still acting. She's in uh, Midnight Club. I think she mainly works because uh, paralleling New Nightmare, she, her husband in real life is an effects artist, so I think she mainly works like with him doing effects stuff. Okay. And now when she acts, it's like, yeah, I'm yeah, assuming Mike Flanagan that. put him put her in Midnight Club because she's Nancy. Mm -hmm. um, she has a really brief cameo in Star Trek Into Darkness because I think her husband oh, did the yeah. effects for that movie. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll do New Nightmare right. Although New Nightmare is pretty great. Until it isn't. Until it isn't. We'll talk about that right now. New Are we just going to skip over Freddy's Dead? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, well, the map says we're fucked. So Freddy's Dead. I do have some nice things to say about Freddy's Dead, but not many. I, I watched it twice. Oh, my God. I watched it in the theater. Oh, okay. I thought you meant, like, recently. No, no, no. I, I remember watching it in the theater, and what I remember about it was... They told you when you got your ticket ripped mm -hmm. that you put on your 3D glasses when the, when the gal in the movie puts hers on and you take them off when the gal in the movie takes hers off. Yes. And, and I was like, okay. And then I was like, that was really bad. And so <laughs> on home, when it came out on home video, I watched it again. Mm. And I said to myself, that was really bad. What do you know? I beat my high score. <laughs> yeah, it does follow that template of all these kids have their thing that they're scared of, and Freddy's going to use that against them. I think the one effective scene is the Carlos, the kid with the hearing aid. Let me tell you something, Spence. I stopped talking back when it became hazardous to my health. Do you know what I mean? There's some interesting stuff there with like the sound design, because he he pulls his hearing aid out and the it just sound just cuts and it's like dead silent. It's like oh, that's kind of neat. It's very gimmicky. But then Freddy gives him like a like a monster hearing aid. It's like a little bug thing that burrows into his brain, and it, it, it enhances sounds. And it also seems like, well, the premise is... The premise is stupid. The, the premise is stupid. Springwood? Springwood, Ohio, yeah. Springwood, Ohio. Uh, there's, there's a title card in the beginning, in the beginning that says, all the kids in Springwood have either been killed or killed themselves. Yes. This is supposed to, like, oh, it says, like, 10 years oh, in the future, or whatever yeah. that means. Over the course of 10 years, and... Um, the town now has no kids in it. It's all like adults who've gone insane. Yeah. Uh, and Which is kind of an interesting idea. That, you know what I was going to say? That little snippet of time, that's, that's your Freddy TV series. Mm. Freddy the Lost Years. Oh. When oh. Freddy kills off, he, he doesn't care about the, the original kids anymore. He's just every kid in the town of Springwood. Yeah. And you maybe could have a magical ghost or someone that, that puts that barrier. 
Yeah, because there's that, a barrier. That's your pilot, right? Yeah. The, 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 some kind of like positive energy or, or force says, Freddy, you're so evil, but nobody can stop you ever. Mm -hmm. You can't leave this town of Springwood. We're going to put this barrier around. Fine, I'll kill them all. And then, and then, um, and then you know, obviously it wouldn't have a very positive ending, but our main character would be uh, John Doe. Yeah. I don't know if he, he had a real name. They call him John Doe because he's just John Doe through the whole movie. He yeah. showed up. No, they don't know. He's yeah. just the last kid. The last kid, and that, and and so like yeah, you got ten years of Freddie offing kids in this town, and it just continues to degrade. Makes and all the parents go insane. Everyone's, everyone's going insane. No one knows. Because I like why. that little bit where they go to the carnival. Town fair. And there are no kids. And there's like the little the old and it man. It becomes a John Waters film. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's uh, uh, the little guy and his. There, it's like a uh, bumper cars, and he's just by himself. It's so like sad and weird. Like that's it's, the only like five seconds of the yeah, movie that works. Roseanne for me. Barr shows up. Well, that's that's a whole other thing. And Tom Arnold and ugh. Ethel, I want my children back. You know they bring him. It's a, it's a good idea, um, like, if you did it in a really kind of, like, weird, depressing way, where it's like someone comes to the town and, um, and you know, like, jobs that teenagers would do, like, no one's doing them, like, no one's bagging the groceries or whatever, like, working the fast food lane or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and the parents are all just, everyone's sort of like kind of shell-shocked in this like zombie state, yeah. but not in a cartoonish way, which is how it was done in Freddy's, Freddy's Dead. Licky, I got your nose, Licky! Um, and you have like psychotherapists and reporters and, you know, doctors, and everyone's trying to figure out like what happened, why all these kids killed themselves, mm -hmm. you know. And you could, you could take that concept and twist it. Uh, this was what made me think of it because I was saying he he really took his time with the uh, hearing aid kit. Yeah. He like w this elaborate death that took so long. No 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 please. It was like he was relishing being able to kill again. Yeah. And and do it in his his special Freddy way. <laughs> And, uh, it doesn't he, come across that way in the movie, though. If that was the whole thing, is like it did oh. to me. Oh, okay. It did to me. I never really got that vibe. It's, it's like, he's, like he's he's like like yeah, like Wiley e. Coyote and like being silly and like oh, here's a pin. I'm yeah. gonna drop the pin, and then he catches it, and then he's like, oh, here's a hundred he's got a handful pins. of pins, and and he's just really just like he's, he's relishing in, in in killing this kid, mm -hmm. and and that would be Freddy just like very slowly picking off off. Uh, kids. Yeah. Uh, but that's another question I have is, Freddy, uh, it's for you. And I know the answer already. Okay. Uh, is Freddy, Freddy was a child murderer. Uh, pr pr presumably little children. Perhaps the ghosts of the kids jump roping, etc. Um, well, that's, that's... I get why he didn't kill the parents, mm -hmm. but why does he wait till the kids of the parents have grown up into teenagers. Why doesn't Why doesn't he get them when they're little? Um, well, one, you don't want to kill a bunch of little kids in a movie, but uh, that's it. There, <laughs> there is uh, uh, some deleted stuff from the original movie. One, it was more. I don't know if this was just in the script or if they shot it and it got cut, but there was more just because it's kind of like implied that maybe he was a child molester, but they don't dwell on it. They in do the in first the, one. Yeah. They did, well, just in Freddy in general, they always say, like, he was a filthy child murderer. And there's this sort of, like, yeah. and he's so, like, especially with the, 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 the female characters in the movie, he's so sort of seductive, and he's always doing weird shit with his tongue. So there's a sexual quality to him. Yes. But originally, it was more explicit that he was molesting children. 
And that got cut because there was like a big famous story in the news going on at the time that the movie was being made about some school where there was like a rash of teachers that were molesting kids. There was this huge news story. A school for children where uh, the children had accused teachers of molesting them on a very systematic way. We had to soft pedal the sexuality a little bit, but that was probably even better because it becomes subtext. But another thing that was cut from the original movie was that all the kids, all the Elm Street kids, had younger siblings. And those younger siblings are the ones that Freddy molested and killed. Glenn, Rod, Tina, they all had a brother or sister once. So that's the explanation. All the, the Elm Street kids, well, no, they would have been the younger siblings, I guess. They would have been like babies and their older siblings who were like, you know, seven, eight yeah, years yeah, old. Yeah, those yeah. are the ones that got molested and killed by Freddy. You weren't always an only child. We're on Freddy's Dead, the final nightmare. Um, we just got through Roseanne Barr. <laughs> <laughs> well, the setup, the, the whole premise, because it's like we were talking about, each movie kind of introduces a little bit new kind of Freddy lore. Oh, his mom was a nun. We learned that. And this one, we learned that, I guess we made fun of it a little while ago, but Freddy just had like a wife and a kid. All these late horror sequels where they introduce like a kid or a family member, they did that with the, the Friday the 13th movies too. But yeah, when you see him and it's Robert England out of makeup and he's wearing, he looks like a 1950s dad. Yeah, I was and, trying to pinpoint the time frame. Yeah, I guess it would maybe be 60s or something. 70s. But, uh, but I, I, in all these movies, I've never pictured, I just picture him as like this creepy kind of older, yeah. disgusting man that probably lived alone and maybe he actually lived in a shack that we were talking yeah. about. He gets well, he burnt was, up in the shack. But. He was like a psychopath. He choked his wife out in the garden. And he had a secret, like, murder basement. Yeah. So he was like a psychopath, like like a Jeffrey Dahmer type. I guess. I just never really... Life. That's not what I associate Freddy with. It's like the BTK killer, you know? It's just Whatever. Dennis Rader. He had normal family life, wife, kids, and then this entire different compartmentalized psychopath part that murdered children and he had all her pictures up in the basement. Yeah, yeah. The mom found the basement room, so he choked her out in the garden. I'm okay with that, really. It, it, it's a, just a different kind of character. I guess, but that's the twist of the movie is the John Doe character thinks that he's Freddy's kid. And then the twist is, no, I was using you to get to my, my daughter. Yes, who will help him escape Springwood. Which, for some reason, he's trapped in Springwood. I don't know why. That's in the Freddy TV series on Netflix. Oh, oh, the explanation, yeah. come out in 2025. <laughs> Freddy's backstory. we got to do something to retroactively make Freddy's dead look better. Yes. Because, yeah, there's literally, like, a force field that keeps him in Springwood, and I don't know why. Glinda the Good Witch. <laughs> it's a crossover. Oh, okay. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Uh, yeah, something like, I don't know, uh, uh, magic. Yeah, they treat Springwood like it's some sort of cursed town, which it's just, that's just where Freddy was. But this isn't Springwood. Every town has an Elm Street. He's like, every town has an Elm Street. Where it's like, Elm Street doesn't, Elm Street is just like any town USA. That's the point of that title. It's like, this is horror that's happening in suburbia. Like, that's all that means. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no connection to, like, an actual Elm Street. Right, yes. I don't yeah. even think they say Elm, Elm Street in the original movie, ever. I just, it's, it's yeah. Like, the, this the, is this... the logic of the Freddy's house. It's a, the Freddy's house. Yeah. So it's not really Freddy's house. Blah, right. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> this, is, this is all, it's all shit that was just made up yeah. at the last minute mm -hmm. to crank out a movie to eke out a profit to make the next one. Yes. It's not high art. But that's the... It's not, it's not Tolkien's uh, <laughs> uh, novels where he sits there and plans it out mm -hmm. and thinks about it. It's trash. But that's the, that's the fun of the earlier movies is young filmmakers doing their best to try and make sure. something out of this and be visual and creative. And that's what Freddy's Dead is missing. It's so drab and ugly looking visually. Yeah, it's sort of flat. It's flat, like, early 90s gross. Yeah. And they tried. Um, the best visual is when that TV fills up with blood. 
There's a couple of neat things in it, but... There's a couple in-camera tricks that are kind of neat, where they do, like, like we were talking about in the, in the Nightmare Logic, where you can walk through a door and you're yeah. suddenly in the boiler room. There's parts where they do everything in-camera, where, like, the... The one girl that was molested by her father as a yeah. kid, she's in like a, the bathroom at the uh, yeah they do like a the pen. group home, yeah, and she like bends over and wipes up, uh, brushes water on her face, and then when she sits up, her house is behind her, yeah, and then she turns around and she turns back, and the bathroom is gone, and that's all done in camera. It's like that's pretty yeah. clever, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> But then the movie just the end of the movie is just Freddy pulled out into the real world because that's part of the mythos, and. They just kind of beat him up in a basement. Because it worked so well before. And the reason they discover that they can pull him out into the real world is because Yafet Kodo runs into him. For some reason, Freddy's tormenting Yafet Kodo. The I only don't know why. Adult. The only adult that he ever torments. And for no reason, Yafet Kodo just like Ripped. grabs his sweater and rips it off. And that's how he discovers, oh, we can pull him out. I think I've got a way to get him. And this is like, like 10 minutes before the movie ends. They're like, let's do this. Yeah. It's so bad. And Freddy is so rubbery looking. They don't light him creepy. No, he's lit evenly and his sweater is perfectly clean. Yeah. It's not dirty. It's, it's. I don't even think they put in the earlier movies, he has like dentures in, or his teeth look like rotted and gross. This one, they just half-assed everything. (laughs) Then open up. And you shall be forever. And then the 3D element was the gimmick and she puts a pipe bomb in his chest and blows him up and <laughs> the ghosts of evil escape. But first they float around the camera so you can get your 3D money's worth. Yep. I was shocked because I rewatched it uh, for this. I didn't rewatch most of them because I've seen them all so many times, but I rewatched it and I was shocked that after Freddy dies, the movie's just done. They are like, let's get out of here. Oh, yeah. Like immediately. Freddy's dead. <laughs> he blows up, and then the, the credits start rolling like 10 seconds later. <laughs> yeah, they go, Freddy's dead. That's the Iggy Pop song starts playing, and there's a fun montage of all the better movies. Yes, yes. They had to save it somehow, but yeah. it wasn't enough. Free graphics. Let's get out of this and move to New Nightmare. Okay. Which is like two thirds of a really good movie. Uh, the precursor to Scream. 90, yeah. This is ninety four. Yeah, it's like uh, two years before Scream. It's like, like Wes Craven discovering uh, Meta. Nightmare on Elm Street. Freddy, that's right. I like that movie. It was scary. Well, well, the first one was, but the rest sucked. But like, this is like super meta. Where they're pulling out of the movie, and now we're watching the actors yeah, from the movie. Right. They're watching the movie, the original movie in this movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I mean, it's 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 a wonderful idea. And it's such a, I mean, especially after Freddy's dead, where it's like, well, what do you do? Yeah. And they're like, we realized with that movie, nobody liked it. We have, to, we're gonna make another one. We're gonna bring Wes Craven back. And there's what the, do you do? There's uh, there's some jabs at Freddy's dead in this, and. The, uh, you know, like when she goes on the talk show. Love you, babe. Lunch. Oh, yeah. Where wow. it's like Robert England comes out in character, and that's like what Freddy had devolved into this right. sticky, Clown corny. Show. And like, there's yeah. kids like that, that are cheering for him. And <laughs> it's embarrassing. And, uh, Heather Langenkamp plays herself in a much better performance than in the original movie. Yeah, well, she was a kid. She has it on her forehead the whole film. <laughs> it's like, can you stop shooting for a day? Yeah, yeah. Um, but she does not have a zit on her forehead. She's playing herself, and she's married to a guy who is an effects artist. Um, and it starts out how the original film starts off, Freddie assembling his glove. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, she has a nightmare that the glove, his animatronic new glove, comes to life. It's a little Easter egg there too behind them uh, when they're working on, they're like trying to fix the glove and there's like a split in half Freddy head. Mm. And that's from the end of five 
when Alice is like separating from Freddy. Oh, sure. That that head is right behind him there. Oh, neat. So I'm assuming one of the effects artists from Five worked on this one, and they just had it laying around sure. and put it in the background of the shot. But yeah, that's her nightmare, and then she wakes to like an earthquake, and uh, the, er the well, she gets awakened by the pottery break sound effect, which is uh, should have its own credit on this movie. It's in it like a hundred times. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the earthquake is, it's, it, it's very like, it's a very jarring, weird, ten, tense opening. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really like, like guide you in or softly, you know, it's just sort of like this weird opening and you're like, what's going on? And then it's a movie set and then it's not, and then she wakes it's up. It's chaotic. And, yeah, yeah, and it's just like very like, like anxiety inducing. And, yeah. and you get thrown into her world and she's, She's raising a kid now. She's playing herself, but her husband is not her real life husband, I would assume. No, not. it's an actor. Wes Craven is playing himself in it. Uh, Robert Shea, the producer, he wants to get her back. They're going to make a new Freddy movie. Mm -hmm. Who better to resurrect Freddy than his creator? Well, I thought Wes stopped doing horror movies. <laughs> She's, and, and she's worried about the, the mental health of her son. He's not sleeping well. And there's all this stuff going on. But the, 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 the supernatural element of it is that the, the genius, Wes Craven, is writing a script. And the script is like coming to life as he writes it. Is yeah. kind of what's implied? His dreams are guiding the script. And then what's happening in the script is happening in real life. It's all very good until they hit you with the idea. Well, in this nightmare in progress, then, does this thing have any weaknesses? Oh, well, it can be captured sometimes. Captured? Not by storytellers, of all things. It's not really Freddy. Freddy yeah. is fictional. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. And I, I kind of remembered the movie in my head. Freddy is essentially a demon. And I'm like, I'm, I like that. Because mm -hmm. at the end, I don't like the effect. No. Oh but God, at, no! <laughs> at the end, at the end, Freddy reveals himself to be a demon in, in the Freddy form, and the demon doesn't quite get it right. Mm -hmm. The face is wrong, and the just the, the claw's gone. But Wes Craven was like, as we made the movies, the movies existing kept the demon in check. However, it happens when the story dies, the evil is set free. Freddy, this is ancient thing. And for uh, 10 years, he's been held captive pretty much as Freddy in the Nightmare on Elm Street series. But now that the films have ended, the genie's out of the bottle. That's, that's what the nightmares are telling me, and that's what I'm writing. The power of my screenplays keep a demon, you know, it became too, like, stupid. Yeah, over-explaining, which is what the first movie doesn't do, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. No. We don't know how Freddy Krueger is appearing in dreams. He just is now. Yes. And that's what makes it creepy. Right. You there are rules to it. We understand certain yeah. things about him. He like, can't get you when you're awake. Yeah. That's it. Um, but but this, this nonsense with this, this, the movies, movies being made don't let... Team. Uh, no. no, 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 it's great, it was great. Yeah. She had the stalker, the, the, the Freddy voice calling her house, mm -hmm. um, the, the fake out with the limo driver. Uh, there's just a lot of good stuff in it. And all the stuff with various characters like questioning her about, because she's in horror movies and she has this kid, would you let your kid watch horror movies? This kind of like idea of uh, art imitating life or life yes. imitating art. Is she, is she how does violence affect you? Yeah. Is she screwing her son up? Yeah. Um, and the, that cynical doctor. The, is she's, oh, that performance is great. That yeah, lady. Yeah, she's yeah, good. Yeah. The man from your films? Freddy Krueger? With a claws? She just died a year ago. No, oh, really? Yeah. She lived to like 85 or something. Was she ever on Star Trek? I don't think so. She looks like she would have been on Star Trek. She was not on Star Trek, but... Was Lynn Shea ever on Star Trek? No. I guess Robert Shea didn't produce it, Lynn, so no. Lynn Shea was not on, on Star Trek. She was in everything else. <laughs> but not on Star Trek. But um, Robert England's in it as himself. Um, 
and he's sort of like, they're all kind of affected by this, this thing that's going on, and there's some really great ideas, and, and it mostly works. It's like a B plus. Until the third act, where it completely falls apart. Yeah, when Freddy, I was, I was, I was saying earlier, like, it, it, it kind of builds to this great moment when Freddy emerges in the kid's bedroom or something. Yeah, yeah, he comes out of the bed, similar yeah. to the first movie, but he's so, like, more menacing and darker and mysterious and he's got, now. got, like, green eyes. Yeah, and, and, and I don't I, really like the makeup all that much. I think it looks, a little, again, a little rubbery. It does, um, yeah. But the idea that he's, yeah, kind of a meaner, darker version. He's not really Freddy. He has, like, leather pants, which is a little silly. He says, I think he says one Freddy-esque line. Ever play in the cat? I, I think I would have liked it if he didn't say anything. Well, that's, yeah, the, the scene in the hospital when he's paralleling the original movie where he's dragging her. learn how to skin a cat. He's like, uh, yeah, because the whole idea is, oh, this isn't like cartoony Freddy anymore, but then he still has goofy lines. Pick a pet for the rug rat, bitch. They're trying to like, I guess, have their cake and eat it too. I don't know. He should have just like, like, you know, like when he's killing the babysitter, like, like drag her up there and... You don't know, say anything. Just look, either look at him and just go, and make some kind of like horrible, like evil growl or yeah. something. Um, and then... Or just laugh. Just laugh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Something scary, something demonic. Uh, I love that idea that a demon has taken on the form of a famous movie killer. Yes. It's, it's to such, torment the people that made the movie. Torment the people that made the movie. It's such a great concept. The, the, the third act, yeah, because it, it's like, I don't know. It parallels the opening because the opening is a dream sequence where they're making a movie and it takes place in this like the set for the movie is like this weird hellscape. There's fire coming through windows and stuff. And the conclusion of the movie takes place in, I guess, the the actual place that that was a set of. And it's so it feels so disconnected from the rest of the story, though. Like yeah. if it was, I don't know, even if they were in the house from the original movie, that would be enough or a set of the house from the original movie. I, I was saying so, to you, Something yeah. we have more of a connection to than this, like, because that set's kind of like, it's not cheap, but it, it looks, looks kind of small. Yeah, it looks stupid. Yeah. Uh, it's got like the seven deadly sins uh, and just carved into stone. It's very like, like old, old world, um, yeah. ancient. It, it, it's, and then it's, they cut the miniatures that are like these big yeah. Coliseum looking things that it doesn't match it, the little it, set we're watching. No, it's meant to like, invoke like biblical times because like, this is an ancient demon but yeah. it, it doesn't work visually it doesn't work no no it looks like a and cheap set. the effects are bad <laughs> like they could have taken so, like halfway through the movie you know Fred, the freddy stuff kind of calms down and she starts like filming the movie yeah and then, then it gets, that's your like, excuse to have the super set. meta and then yeah they rebuild the house um, doesn't that happen in one of the Scream movies? Like they Scream have, 3, yeah. They have the house inside of a soundstage. Yeah. But, but do something like that where, yeah, they, they recreate the original house um, and, you know, and she's all freaked out about it. And then, and then it kind of parallels the ending of the first one, which is what they did with this when John Saxon comes over. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden he's a cop. And he's saying the same lines. Yeah, he's I, I calling like, her Nancy. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's lots of Easter eggs in this. Like when she's trying to get to her kid in the room, just, screw your pass. Yeah. Where's your pass? Screw your pass. Do you have a pass? Screw your pass. It's all right. You know, like references to the first one. Um, her going up the stairs, she's stepping through the, the goo stairs, marshmallow stairs <laughs> that she did in the first one. Yeah. Um, but it would have been so much greater if if they tied it back even more to the first one. Don't do the ancient demon stuff. Have, have Freddy still be a demon. Sure. Um, but, but have her pull him out like on the set. Yeah. She like falls asleep in her like chair, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, Wait, Heather, it's time to film the scene. She's asleep. <laughs> She's been through a lot. She's, 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 uh, her husband died in a car crash, and then she went to look at his body and just walked into a room where they're sawing open a corpse. It shoots really <laughs> hard for her. And then, and Did then, you notice that when she goes to look at her husband's body? Oh, yeah. The, I never, I, I rewatched this movie too, and I was like, I never pretty, really uh, noticed that before. There's... Lucy Goosey or <laughs> autopsy department. There's like five corpses laying around, and one has their chest completely ripped open, and they just let her walk in. But what would have been great 
she's sleeping in her chair, her like actor chair, and then they're like trying to roll the cameras and they're trying to get her on the set and she won't wake up and then she pulls that demon Freddy out of the nightmare world and Robert England's there on set. <laughs> And he, and like he just reading goes, the magazine. What the fuck? <laughs> and then the demon just goes, Flah! and cuts Robert England's head off. <laughs> and then all the crew is running, and it's like chaos, and the set collapses, and she's got to battle him. But, but we talked about the ending uh, when we, they reveal that the Freddy is an ancient demon, mm-hmm. and it's this terrible, like, morph. Yeah, and then, and that, then his that, head explodes. That and awful early '90s morph effect that every movie had. Like, like an awesome scene where that the the not Freddy like it's like head just like like practical like horns pop out you yeah. know and it's like skin starts falling off and he gets bigger and like like his legs break and like the pants split open and these like 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 uh, like hooves come out. And sure. <laughs> And it's like this horrible transformation, and the the crew's just like watching it. Someone says, "Should we be rolling?" <laughs> Wes, and Wes is like, "Keep rolling." <laughs> Robert Shea comes in. And he's like, "Keep rolling. We're gonna save a lot of money on effects." <laughs> he's smoking as this demon's emerging from the Freddy body, and then they all have to battle him. And there's, there's so many great things gonna happen. But, Jay, the one weakness, if you want to defeat an ancient demon, the one weakness is fire. <laughs> what else does a demon hate but <laughs> fire? Turn that fire up in that oven. It's such a shame, too, because I do really like the rest of the movie. Yeah. Like I said, it's really good until it isn't. It's really good. And it's good. definitely uh, you know, a nice change of pace for what the series had kind of devolved into by the time you get to, like, Freddy's yeah, Dead. Yeah, uh, definitely Freddy's Dead. Mm-hmm. Five was sort of like, that was the Hellraiser Bloodlines. Mm. You know, late, later Halloween movies, Freddy, Freddy Five. It's like uh, before Scream re-energized the, the horror yeah. world. The, the formula is tired. New Nightmare almost did it. Mm-hmm. If it didn't leave everyone with a bad taste in their mouth at the end, it almost did it. Yeah. Uh, and it was on. Un- un- it wasn't until he made Scream. Damn little shits! Would you call me? Huh? Not your friend. Yeah. So, Robert Shea. Yes. The the man, the myth, the legend, the producer of all the nightmare on Elm Street films. If we're gonna talk about Easter eggs, because a true a true success story, Robert Shea. New Line Cinema started literally in the trunk of his car. It started as a distri- uh, distribution company where he would drive prints of like Reefer Madness and Pink Flamingos to mm. studios to, to project. Pink Flamingos, huh? Yeah, he dis- was the original distributor for Pink no Flamingos. No kidding. Which is why a lot of later John Waters movies were produced by New Line Cinema. You mentioned uh, New Nightmare, yeah. or you mentioned Freddy's Dead, having like a weird John Waters vibe in parts. Rachel Talalay, who directed it. Worked, she produced all the Nightmare movies, but she worked with John Waters as well on like polyester and hairspray. Makes sense. Makes sense. There was supposed to be a divine cameo in uh, Freddy's Dead. The part when he's on the airplane at the beginning. Fred Height. Don't be a pussy. That was supposed to be divine? That was supposed to be divine, but divine passed away before they made it. Oh, so. I was going to say, was divine still alive by then? Yeah, but... No, divine died. Oh, but, well, Robert Shea, uh, New Nightmare really established that they love self referential stuff. Easter eggs, yes. as they're called. Um, and Robert Shea is one of the very few people that has a connection to every movie. Yes, he, he has a cameo in every movie? I don't think. He's in five, and maybe not one. I, I'm sure there's a million Easter eggs. One we noticed um, when Freddy's uh, Robert England's in drag as the nurse. Um, he's holding up all the vials of blood, and one of them says England on it. Um, so we've established this is where we're going to get to our our thing. We've established that we that, mentioned like five hours ago when we started the video. Yes, we've established that Robert Shea likes wink, wink. If, if, if you're putting yourself as a cameo in your own films, rewatching the films, I've discovered something 
that, and I don't know if it's been discovered by anybody else on the internet. I asked you, the Freddy expert, and you didn't know anything <laughs> I, about I it. I had never noticed said, this. Jay, I called you up on the phone. <laughs> I picked up my phone. Your old I, rotary phone. I yeah. dialed my num your number on my rotary phone, and I said, Jay, how, do you know about this? I've noticed something, and you said no. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's on the internet, but we're gonna call it the great Freddy headshot theory. <laughs> Is that uh, in every film there is a hidden actor headshot or publicity thing? Publicity photo. Yeah. That's breaking the fourth wall. That's hidden in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. Uh, Heather Langenkamp's in the bedroom, and I think Johnny Depp is there. He is. Yeah. And she on her closet door, and it's Johnny Depp's headshot. It's Johnny Depp's. Yeah. Uh, and then Nightmare Two. Uh, there's a shot. This is a weird one. This is a weird one. Um, there's a shot. Is it the girl going up the stairs? Um, or is it the guy? I think it's I think Jesse? it's Jesse, the guy. Yeah. Yeah. And on the back of the door leading down to the basement, he's well. He's going up the stairs out of the basement. Yeah. 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 There's a there's the headshot of what we think is the actress. Yeah. With the, the it's like torn on the corner. There's like a tiny corner of it's ripped off. But why would it even be there? On the back of the door. Yeah. And there it is. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, when um, uh, Brooke Bundy, Kristen's mom's talking, in the background is her own headshot, <laughs> black and white headshot framed mm -hmm. on the end table. Yes. It's like the, the I, I always think of the room with the spoon picture. <laughs> it's like that. It's just in the, in the shot and you're like, well, okay. But uh, four is where it takes a slight turn from like an industry used photo oh, yeah. to um, uh, Kristen has been drugged by her mom so that she'll fall asleep. And she runs up to her bedroom and the room's spinning and we have this, this uh, bird's eye shot of the camera turning. And on the floor is like a teen magazine that's open and it's Johnny Depp. Yes. In the teen magazine. The co-star of the original film. Five is questionable. Five is questionable. It looks more like a, like a production still. Like they have set photographers that there's a couple different photos that look like they're production stills from other movies. Uh, there's a, like a like a martial arts photo, but then if you go, uh, there's a different scene when when she's kind of like near her bed, and next to her bed is a photo of a man. It's a black and white, mm. and he's an older man with darker hair, and he's kind of like like sitting there like this. Yes. And I don't know what that is. <laughs> I, I thought it might be the dad. It's not. It doesn't look like a headshot, but it is a weird it's black a and white photo. It's a wider shot, yeah. yeah. And, and it looks like something. But she has a lot of weird black and white photos mm -hmm. stuck to her wall all over that room. Yeah. And I don't know why. Um, six doesn't have any headshots because Six doesn't get anything right. Uh, I, 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 there could be one in there somewhere. I rewatched it and I, I was looking for him now and I didn't Unless see anything. Unless they got super creative because mm. I was I was looking at all the, the anti-drug posters. Oh yeah, I was looking at those and I, but those are like a produced poster. The the D.A.R.E. logo, sure. But but certain posters might have been made for the movie. Like this is where it becomes a little gray area and only Robert Shea himself could answer this question. I tried to get in touch with him, but I was unsuccessful. Um, so it's possible there's something in Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Okay. Um, but we're not 100% certain. I don't know! There's nothing as blatant as part two where there's just for no reason a headshot just taped to the wall. Part one and Johnny <laughs> Depp on her and, yeah. closet and then, yeah. That one even makes more sense because that could be like, uh, she has a photo of her, her crush, her friend yeah. on the wall, sure. even though it looks like a headshot. Yeah, yeah. But part two, there's no reason yeah. that her headshot would be on that wall in the neighbor's weird. basement. It would, you, who tapes a picture to the back of your basement door? Yeah. Nobody, but and three too, uh, three as well. Yeah. The, the framed portrait. Sometimes they do that in movies where they're like, oh, this character's house needs some pictures. What do we have? We have pictures of them. That's oh. clear. To, oh, they're, do you have your, a picture of yourself <laughs> framed on your nightstand? No, most people don't. It's yeah. a little weird. Yeah. But, um, uh, and then lastly, New Nightmare, uh, a meta self-aware movie. Obviously, um, Wes Craven and uh, Heather Langenkamp are out by his beautiful long infinity pool mm -hmm. uh, and they come in from outside and Heather Langenkamp's headshot is on his It is weird bookshelf. that 
in the reality of that movie, Wes Craven would have Heather Langenkamp's headshot in his house? It's weird, yes. What's his wife think of that? Exactly. It's like, yeah, I get I get all the Freddy stuff, oh, memorabilia sure. yeah. he has, but a specific actor's headshot framed on your bookshelf is a little strange. <laughs> it crosses a certain line. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah, why, why do you still have a headshot? You shot that movie 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You are you like you have some kind of obsession with that Goyo? <laughs> Is uh, that his wife? That's yeah. Wes Craven's wife? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's a little jell of Wes Craven's obsession with Heather Langenkamp. But, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's the great headshot theory. The great Freddy headshot theory. Um, only My only explanation is that, especially the early movies, they're kind of cheap, low budget movies. Like, eh, we need photos. Let's grab. We're in the production office. Just grab their headshot and we'll just stick it on the wall. But could be that. that doesn't but there's no reason in part two yes. for there to even be anything on that wall. That doesn't explain part two. Yeah. Um, and so is Robert Shea just find it amusing to do this? I don't know. I don't know. How, I don't have any connection to Robert Shea. He's, he's, he's older now. He's probably retired from the movie making industry. He, he got pretty sick of it. That's kind of, yeah, after Lord of the Rings, he's making all that money, and then it was sold to Warner Brothers. And he's like, I'm done with this. He's like 85. He's, yeah. Um, so, but uh, yeah, I, I would love an answer to this. There's probably lots of people out there who've worked on Freddy films or who are still active in the industry. Who knows? But that's the great Freddy headshot theory trademark. Yes. By us. Someone else might have noticed this, I don't know, but uh, that that's... I, I had never heard it before, I had never noticed it before, and I've seen these movies tons of times. That's the so. impetus for our discussion about all the Freddy films. It took us three hours to get to this. Yeah, and, and we, we did it. We did it, and then they did a Nightmare on Elm Street remake.